Hello, I'm Tara Brabazon. I'm the Dean of Graduate Research at Flinders University and welcome to Vlog 167, The Blue Economy. And wow, I promise you this is not the start of a Reservoir Dogs series of vlogs, Mr. Pink, Mr. Blue, Mr. Green, I promise. But it is the start of a series of four vlogs exploring new, edgy, interesting, provocative, passionate areas of the economy. And they are the blue economy, we're going to be looking at the political economy, the gig economy, and yes, the green economy. But we start with the blue economy. And I promise this is not a vlog on pornography or the British boy band. I'm not sure what's worse, the British boy band or pornography. Probably the boy band, but I promise neither of those entities are involved. Instead, the blue economy is a fascinating new movement cluster of industries, cluster of research projects. And we in universities, you as PhD students, have incredible opportunities in this area. And you as a PhD student in myriad disciplines, wow, can be a part of this. It is an exciting time. So the blue economy, as you can tell by the noun in that phrase, the blue economy comes from economics. It explores the money that is made from the marine environment, from our coasts, but also our oceans. And the challenge with this term, and wow, it's a provocative intellectual puzzle, is how we balance protection and use, or preservation and exploitation. We have to get that dance right. And sustainability is the key. Now, I have some challenging relationships with the word sustainability, like I do with the word resilience, by the way, because both of them are used so glibly these days that the meaning is unclear. So when people say sustainability, what does that even mean anymore? So we need to drill down a lot more and provide some very clear definitions, I think. But there is no doubt that to engage with the blue economy, we require local, regional, national and international strategies. So we're deploying the resources of the oceans, making money out of the oceans, while also respecting the health of the ecosystem. And we'll get to why that balance matters so much in a sec. The economic benefits we gain from the ocean are widely constituted. Very easy to have a whole series of industries and I can list the value for all of them. But there's a series of other industries and entities where it's much harder to sort of KPI it or talk about, right, well, what's the economic value in the short term? And that, of course, includes biodiversity and carbon storage, wow, but also coastal protection very hard to work on the economic value of coastal protection in terms of tourism in the long term, and also indigenous stewardship. So indigenous studies around the world is integral to our thinking about the blue economy. There are two definitions of the blue economy that exist, and that's why it's very important that you're clear if someone's talking about it and using the phrase, be clear which definition they're deploying, because that'll determine the nature of the conversation. The first is simply the economic development and deployment and exploitation of the oceans. That's one definition that exists in the literature. The second one ex explores sustainable economic activity, right? So why sustainability matters so much in the blue economy is that the sectors involved in our oceans, our coasts, our, our maritime environments, the industries involved are so diverse that if one industry goes for it and you know exploits it and makes a lot of money, goes, we can make money here, let's do that, then it can destroy the other industries. So that's why it's very important that a balance is created and sustainable development is considered. Because particularly environmental tourism and nature tourism, which are very, very large areas of those industries at the moment, and particularly the coastal regions can be threatened. So if we simply go for it, if we simply go, right, well, we're in the oceans, we're going to make some profit here, let's do it, then a whole series of longer term economic advantages are cut off. And that's why I think the word stewardship is important here as a trope, as an imperative. I like it a lot. I think there's some very interesting work to do around it because ecology and the economy must be aligned. And those of us that have lived through the last 40 years know how complicated the ecology and economic dance 
can be. It's getting very, very tangled up and we need some clear thinking and some good research to move us forward. Because what we require is a functional strategy and policy for development. And that development will be economic, it'll be social, it'll also be cultural. And therefore, universities matter, academics matter, researchers, PhD students matter, because we are the people who are best skilled to configure the balance to inform good policy. Now, we know particularly for the Pacific Island nations, and my respect to all my friends out there working in island studies, you are wonderful, your research is absolutely inspirational. But we know when we're dealing with the Pacific Island nations that the blue economy must also be a green economy because sustainable development is necessary because if, if economic development gains priority in Samoa, uh, without that sustainability element, Samoa won't exist. So this is an economic discussion as much as an environmental one and they must interface because two thirds of the economic value of the oceans is based on a healthy ecosystem. Now that's incredibly important, I'll state that again. So two thirds of the economic value of oceans is based on a healthy ecosystem. So if the ecosystem is destroyed, then two thirds of the dough is destroyed focuses the mind. So examples of the industries involved in the blue economy are absolutely extraordinary. In these vlogs I always try and pick topics that multiple disciplines, multiple scholars are interested in, so I'm not just looking at one particular area. And wow, with the blue economy, this is most of a university, to be honest with you. It includes obviously fisheries, it includes tourism, sustainable development, maritime transport, offshore oil and gas, obviously, renewable energy, aquaculture, algae, let's not forget algae, big fan of algae, seabed extraction, but also marine biotechnology, crucial, coastal protection, waste disposal, shipbuilding, ship repair and the surface science required to do that and also desalination. And that's just the start of the list, right? So in 2015, the World Wildlife Federation valued the ocean assets. What are the ocean ash assets worth? US, well, $24 trillion. US, $24 trillion is the value of the ocean assets. 80% of international trade is carried by sea. 350 million jobs worldwide are in the fisheries alone. And aquaculture is the fastest growing area of food production. So for those of you like myself interested in working in food studies, then aquaculture is crucial to our debates, discussions and research. Conservative estimates of the blue economy in Australia, and in Australia the definition tends to be a bit narrow at the moment, but the definition in Australia, if it includes aquaculture, offshore oil and gas, ports, shipping and tourism, so that's the blue economy in Australia at the moment, is recorded at Australian dollars $47.2 billion per annum. Okay, now we all know, those of you who are about my age know that international fisheries are going through some challenges at the moment because of, and I'll call it, because I think you know the science is clear on this, because of overfishing during most of our lifetimes, we're now in a bit of a troubled space. But aquaculture and offshore wind power are emerging as new and burgeoning industries. And the key an emerging area of the blue economy. I did a lot of research on this in the last couple of weeks preparing for this vlog. The argument is the emerging areas of the blue economy will be service-based. Service-based, so information dependent. So the colleagues, particularly in business, government and law, hello team, you're gonna be incredibly involved getting the evidence, getting the information, developing the service sectors, the good policy to predict the areas of the blue economy that will be in development and how we get that balance right. So the service sector will be the growing area in the blue economy. So yes, obviously marine science is incredibly important. Big hi to all the sharkies, you rule. But so is food and food studies, so is coastal tourism and regional development, also island studies, and maritime law and jurisprudence. So 
this is a radical all discipline discussion. It's post-disciplinary, it's interdisciplinary, it's transdisciplinary, it's multidisciplinary. It's the lot. So the challenges that we've got when we're trying to think about and think through and develop a blue economy, the challenges though are clear. Firstly, the resources of the oceans have been overexploited and overfishing has occurred through most of our lifetimes. That is an issue, that is a problem, that is a challenge that we need to manage. But secondly, and that's why we're doing this vlog in some ways. There's a lack of education. There's a lack of training in this area so that there is a capacity for employment in this field. So for you as a PhD student, I wonder how many of you have never heard of the phrase, the blue economy. How can you work in an area or prepare yourself to work in an area if you've never heard of it? So that's important. And also we've got an inadequate integrated care of our ecosystem. It's that integration of the industries that of course I know from creative industries because that's about the integration. But we need to focus on the integration of the industries, a matrix of industries and how we create development. Oh, it's so exciting. So therefore I really wanted to dig into this phrase so you could consider it for your future. We have students in so many areas at Flinders University and all our friends around the world who could be employed in the blue economy. But the phrase itself is under circulating, particularly in doctoral programs. And if you think about it, for which I apologise, we've had to get to vlog 167 before I present this crucial industry to you. So the WWF 2018 principles for the sustainable blue economy picked up three areas of growth in the next decade. And they are the valuing and creation of effective communication systems, so how we create effective communication systems in and around the blue economy, so communication studies for all of you out there, but also education and training, education and training in the blue economy, area of growth, and also consciousness raising, so how we create an awareness of this field and what we need to do to work in it, but also understand it. So if you are a scholar who has anything to do with the ocean or the coast, and many of you do, or you can think about how your work can translate into ocean coastal environments, then this is something for your consideration. And why I love it so much is that it involves proper collaborations, effective collaborations between the public and the private sector, between industry and universities. Most of us love this stuff. That's why we do this work, so we can collaborate with colleagues throughout the economy, throughout society. And this is an inclusive agenda, this one. It's cross-sectorial and wow, it's in the long term. Now, we live on the land and almost all of the threats to the blue economy are land-based. So therefore, all of us as citizens, let alone as researchers, have some skin in this game. So from biology to media, from engineering to communication studies, from law to nanotech, all of us have a role in the blue economy. So do have a think this week about your relationship as a scholar, as a citizen, with the ocean, with the coast, with this blue economy, and its future in Australia, in the Asia Pacific region, but also around the world. And think about how some of your research may be able to be translated into this sphere. You know what? It is time for a little bit of blue in our lives. I wish you love, light and peace. Tea out.